Hello and welcome to week three of Junior Marine Biology Online. My name is Lawrence and I'll be your host guiding you through each week. Last week we received a huge number of responses from kids just like you all around the world. Let's start this week off by having a look at some of the work that you did. This work was all about last week's episode, Coasts. We're still receiving work from the first week of class. How great is that? And the best thing about this program is that you can join whenever you want. The class will always stay online. We love seeing the work that you send us, so please do keep doing that. Now today's lesson is all about corals, and for that, I'm going to hand you over to Pip, our coral expert. Thanks, Lawrence. My name is Pip, and I'm one of the marine biologists here at Maldives Underwater Initiative at Six Senses Lamu and my specific role is I'm the research coordinator and the head marine biologist. Now some of you might be able to imagine what a coral looks like, or maybe you've been lucky enough to see one for yourself. But do you know what actually is a coral? Let's take a look at some options. It grows a little bit like a plant, but it's a bit hard, like a rock sometimes. And what does it eat? Could it be an animal? Well, the answer is it's actually an animal. Let's go to Lawrence to explain more. Thanks for that, Pip. Well, biologists study living things, and we also like to classify and name everything that we study. We do this in a very special way to make sure that we can talk to each other on either end of the world and not get confused about maybe what plant or animal we're talking about. We use a complicated system called a phylogenetic tree, but what we can call it today is a tree of life. It has seven broad categories, but there are also some subcategories which make it even more complex. Let's have a look at humans. Humans are part of the animal kingdom. We are also part of the chordata phylum. That means that we have a spinal cord. We are then part of the mammalian class because we're mammals. And the order that we're part of is the order of primates. Within that order, we're part of the hominidae family. And within that family, we have four genus. And we are part of the homo genus. Within our genus, there's only one living species, sapiens. You might have heard these last two names before, homo sapiens. That's called the scientific name. And that's the scientific name for humans. And everything that we study we refer to with these last two names, the genus and species. So Pip, today we're looking at corals. Can you tell us where corals fit in the tree of life? So now we know corals are in the animal kingdom, just like us. But unlike us, they don't have a backbone. They're in one of the 35 other phylums. Their phylum is called Nodaria. Within Nodaria, there are four main classes, one of which is Anthozoa and this is the class corals are in. From here, it gets a little bit complicated because there are actually three subclasses, two of which are octocorals and hexacorals. These are the two main groups we put corals in, but within these, there are hundreds of genus and thousands of species. But all coral animals are fundamentally the same, and it starts with a small creature called a coral polyp. This is an individual coral animal. All coral polyps have a mouth in the center and tentacles around the outside. They use these tentacles to feed themselves on shrimps or zooplankton. They also have a gut where they digest this yummy food. It's also the tentacles that is a main difference between hexacorals and octocorals. All corals in the group hexacorals have tentacles in multiples of six such as 6, 12, or 18. All corals in the group octocorals have tentacles in multiples of 8, such as 8, 16, or 24. But aren't some corals hard like rocks? The answer is yes. 
Some corals grow a skeleton. These corals are in the family Scleractinia. But unlike us that grow our skeleton inside us, these corals grow their skeleton underneath and around them. During the daytime, they can actually hide inside their skeleton. And at nighttime, the coral polyp will come outside of the skeleton when they want to feed. Coral polyps actually have no color and their skeleton is white. So why are corals so colorful? A coral's color actually comes from another organism, a specific type of algae called zooxanthellae that lives inside its tissues. This algae not only gives them their color, but also provides up to 80% of their food. It does this through photosynthesis, a process that takes light energy and changes it into food. As the algae photosynthesizes, the byproducts are used by the coral, and the coral's waste products are used by the algae. This relationship is called a symbiotic relationship, where both parts benefit. Another example of a symbiotic relationship is between an anemone and a clownfish. The clownfish gets to use the anemone as protection and a home and the anemone gets protection from the clownfish chasing off any predators. Zooxanthellae, what a fantastic word. I'll have to remember that next time I'm doing my favorite activity, playing Scrabble. And now it's time for our activity, color and label the coral. Now, if you need a reminder of what parts of the coral there are, you can head back to the start of this video and click at the right time. Now remember that corals come in absolutely crazy colors, so make yours as colorful as you like.